Hello and welcome to the follow-up of the uh, LaCroix scope. I had said I was going to replace the memory backup battery on this board and it came in. And I have my little keep alive pack here while I remove the original battery. I have a 1500 ohm resistor in series with the battery pack to limit the current. Let me turn down the uh, 2 meter rig here. Hang on just a second. There's a lot of racket in the background. We're back. I have a resistor. I think I meant said that. 1500 ohm resistor here limits the current to about 2 milliamp years maximum out of this pack. The reason I do that is there's going to be a voltage difference between the new rechargeable cell and this double A pack. In fact, we can demonstrate that pretty easily here. I think you can see the meter. Okay, brand new fresh set of double A's in here. We're looking at uh, 3.17 volts, 170 millivolts over uh, 3 volts. Here's the brand new rechargeable lithium battery. And we're looking at 2.8, or call it 2.85 volts. It hasn't been charged, you know, come out of the factory and it's been probably sitting in a warehouse for a while. So the purpose of the limiting resistor is as I'm putting the new battery on the board, I don't want my double A's trying to dump all of their energy, put my wrist strap back on here, all their energy into the lithium battery. Or if the lithium battery happened to be fully charged, I don't want it trying to charge my double A's. 2 milliamp years is about all you need. Uh, you have to figure. LaCroix says this battery will keep the front panel memory alive. They guarantee two years. So it can't be drawing a lot of current to keep the memory alive. So 2 milliamp years is certainly going to be sufficient. Now, this scope is. Oh, God. I don't know. Built back in the late 80s. And I have walked away from this thing for a year at a time and come back and this battery's kept it alive. So you know it's not drawing much current from that battery. So what I need to do now is find a couple of places on the board where I can solder my battery pack. So I'm going to take my voltmeter and sniff around. I don't know if you can see the voltmeter over there. No, nope, probably not. There we go. Probably, can you read it? No. Yeah, if I put something under there, tip it up. Yep, there we go. Okay, now you can read it. What I'm going to do is probably bring my fluke scope meter down here. In fact, nah, I'll leave it upstairs for now. It's got a backlight on it. So let's see if we can find a couple of places where I can pick off the voltage here. I know this is the battery. And it doesn't even look like. Oh, haha, ha, ha, dumbass. Put it on volts DC. Okay, we have 1.3 volts on that battery right there. And obviously, I've got the polarity backwards. Now, I would suspect that I should be able to get a ground over here. Nope. I'm hoping to find a couple of places. Okay, there's a pad right here that's not being used. So I'll put my negative from the battery pack there. And what can I find for a positive connection? I'll have to sniff around a little bit here and see if I can find out where the positive goes. It's not that. There. Someplace on this board, I know I'm going to find. Let's see. I don't see the trace. What I want is someplace I can solder to that won't be disturbed 
when I take the battery off. So in other words, I want a secure point to tie my battery to so the voltage will stay alive. Let me sniff around, and when I find the spot, I'll show you. Well, that took a while, a lot longer than I thought it was going to. It appears, looking at this, I don't know how well we can see this, you can see there's bare copper here, and it looks like it's part of this whole uh, layer that's underneath this first, uh, I don't know what to call it, first layer of the board, I guess. This copper disappears under there, but it appears to be the whole backplane area, but nowhere on here is there any connection. But I got lucky, and I found a spot right here that connects directly to this. So this is connected to that layer of the board, so I'm going to put my positive, con or my, excuse me, yeah, my positive connection is going to go here, and my negative connection is going to get soldered here. Evidently, you can use two different size batteries. They have accommodation for two different sizes. My battery is using this one, as is the replacement. So I'll solder to here because these two points are common. I'll put my negative here, and I'll put my positive here, and then we can safely remove this battery and maintain the memory. So let me get that soldered up. Okay, we have our backup battery in place. I have the board securely stood up with a little vise back there. Now I can go after the solder connections and remove them carefully from the board without creating any short circuits, we hope. Because if we create any short circuits, there goes our memory. So we'll get these off the board, or this off the board, and we'll get the holes cleaned up. There we go. There's our dead battery. Toss that in the trash. Let's see if I can get lucky now. Nah, I'm going to clean these up and I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about all the reflections, but let me see if I can tip that just a little bit more. No, it's not going to. Nope, that made it worse. And I think we can see the area of interest. I'm going to take my solder wick. I've added some fresh solder to the board, something that's not. Uh, lead free and I'm going to add a little bit of liquid flux oops <laughs> that's not a little bit buddy a little bit of so uh, liquid flux to some solder wick just so that it uh, improves its action a little bit now this always makes me nervous even though I've done this a hundred times we don't want any short circuits here so I'm going to go in and just remove the solder from that. There, that one's clear. Almost. Come on. I could use my solder sucker, but uh, I've only got a couple of connections to do here. Although the solder sucker probably would have been the obvious choice. This isn't working out. I should have used the solder sucker. All right, that one's open. That one's open. Now I can slip the battery in there and solder it up. I want to get this flux off of my uh, anti-static mat before it gets okay. sticky. I'll be flux right is cleaned back. off. I'm going to stand this up. I guess you can see that all right. Take our new battery, slip that into our freshly cleaned out holes, I hope. Hope everything's going to line up and fit. Boy, these tabs are tiny. You'd think after all the times that I've done this, I would be comfortable doing it, but when you're messing with something that's this expensive, okay, that one hole is going to be proved to be difficult. Knowing how expensive it would be to replace this always makes me a little bit nervous. Okay, that one's in, that one's in, that one's in. 
Yeah, not a 220 rig is squawking. Let me go turn that down. Alrighty. We'll put some solder on these tabs. Actually, let me just bend that a little bit. And I can flip the board back, make it a little easier access. Normally, I would just lay this down, but I'm trying to put it in a position where you can see what's going on. All for you, my viewers. One, two, and yes, I'm using solder the size of a telephone pole. Been doing it for years. Alrighty, now we remove my backup. Because the new battery is in place, we can remove that lead. I'm going to take the board off of the uh, vise here, lay it down, we'll remove this guy. That's out of there. I will drop it back in the scope, and hopefully the next view you see will be the scope in operation. Whew. Okay, the beast is up on the shelf again. My back will never be the same. That thing weighs a ton. Climbing up on the bench in my age and lifting that thing up there is not fun. However, Let's see what happens. You got your fingers crossed for me? Everybody cross your fingers, cross your toes, hold your nose. Let's see what happens. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, there's the beat. Starting its boot cycle. I'm seeing an image on the screen. It's not jittering. Although it looks like I might have bumped something out of, I might have bumped the yoke a little bit. Now that the plastic's on the front. Oh crap, a rama! You know what? I'm ignoring it. I'm not going back in there for that. Look fine without the bezel on the front. Now that that's on there, this is a little bit low over here. However. The big question is, did it remember the setups? Remember we had a square wave up on the screen? Let's see what happens. Aha! So it remembered the, the uh, time per division setting, it remembered the voltage setting, and it remembered the calibration setting. This is programmable for pulse, square wave, frequency, yada yada, and voltage, I think, if I remember correctly. I'd have to go back and look at the memory, but it appears to have remembered everything even though we took the battery off and put a new battery in there. So I think the operation was successful. There's no jittering. Everything looks good and normal. At least I can read all the text down here. I'm not going to try to... Yeah, maybe I will later. Maybe I'll pop this guy off. I think I can get it off without... Yeah, the hell with it. I don't care. I use this thing couple times a year. It's fixed, it's working, it's good enough for the amount that I am ever going to use it. So that's it. That's how you change out your memory battery. Just Here's use... Something I found oh, Alexa, I what, what I said, it sounded name. like her name. At any rate, uh, this is up and running again. It's usable. I'm happy. I'm the radio mechanic. Thanks for stopping by. Subscribe, like, hate, I don't care. Even if you hate, I get uh, it shows somebody viewed it. <laughs> it counts the same to YouTube. See you later. Bye.